Wow, what a film. The Bridge on the River Kwai was directed by David Lean, and it stars a wonderful cast, including William Holden, Jack Hawkins, Sasue Hayakawa, and of course, the one, the only, the legendary Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Alec Guinness, arguably delivering the greatest performance of his career. The story is about a company of British POWs who are taken to a Japanese prison camp during World War II. The commander of the camp, Colonel Saito, instructs them to build a bridge over the Kwai River, which will greatly benefit the Japanese during the war effort, both strategically and logistically. Alec Guinness plays Colonel Nicholson, the leader of the British troops, and he decides to not only make sure that the bridge is completed on time, but to see to it that the bridge is fitting of the high standard he demands from his men. This bridge will be the best bridge ever built, much better than what the Japanese are capable of. This was an amazing film, one that easily stands the test of time and is still super watchable today. On a technical level, The Bridge on the River Kwai demonstrates a huge leap forward in comparison with previous Best Picture winners. Right off the bat you can feel it. The cinematography is excellent, it captures a sense of reality and scale that topped everything that came before. The acting was terrific across the board, with some, if not most, delivering the best performances of their lives. I loved the story, it was so interesting and the drama was felt throughout, fueled by the gripping power struggle between Saito and Nicholson. This was by far my favorite thing about the film. Saito and Nicholson have excellent chemistry, and the dynamic between them keeps evolving and changing. Saito is a great villain, the best villain we've seen in this marathon since Captain Bly. We understand the motives behind his actions. If he won't finish the bridge on time, he'll have to commit suicide, as is customary in the Japanese army. But that doesn't make him any less cruel, manipulative, and prideful. He demands that the British officers join their subordinates in the manual labor. Nicholson refuses, however, as he wants to personally oversee the construction of the bridge and command his men, so that they'll still feel like soldiers and not prisoners. In response, Saito tortures the poor man, making him stand up in the heat for hours and then locking him up in the isolation box. But Nicholson will not yield his principles, and seeing the deadline drawing near with no progress to show for the time spent, Saito relents and lets Nicholson have his way. This is grade A drama, with strongly written characters, understandable motivations, and a conclusion that makes sense. That cinema right there. There's also the element of the bridge itself. The movie makes you think and wonder, should we root for Nicholson or shouldn't we? On one hand, of course we should, we understand his motivations completely. He wants to show the Japanese what British excellence looks like, keeping their honor and dignity even in captivity. Not only that, it'll occupy his men, give them a purpose and something to hang on to. So yes, we should root for him. But on the other hand, he's basically collaborating with the enemy and assisting them with their logistical infrastructure, so... That's not good. Ultimately, I still felt that his motives were justified and relatable. Although, by the end, you wonder if Nicholson perhaps took his adoration for the bridge a bit too far. The movie isn't perfect. William Holden plays Commander Shears, an American POW already present at the camp when the British soldiers arrive. Early on in the film, he miraculously escapes, but when he reaches friendly forces, they send him back in order to lead a small guerrilla group and blow up the bridge. The scenes with Shears after he escapes are a bit slow and could have been slightly trimmed. The film is almost three hours long, and though it didn't take away too much, it definitely could have been shorter. But honestly, that's the only negative I can think about. The Bridge on the River Kwai is a timeless classic, a must-watch, a great, great film that I recommend to absolutely everybody. Ranking these films is becoming more and more difficult. Ultimately, I think it's just shy of the top two. The slow pace and the runtime that could have been shorter bring it down a bit. I know Gone with the Wind is longer, but that film needed the length. This one didn't but whatever. On the grand scheme of things, The Bridge on the River Kwai is just incredible, so watch it. Watch it right now! Up next is the 31st Best Picture winner, yet another musical set in France from the director of An American in Paris, Gigi. Check back tomorrow for the next video of DB Reviews Oscar Madness Marathon and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a thing. Thank you all very much and let the journey continue!